How's it going everybody, Ben from Basic Mew here and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm doing a binder showcase. I've let you guys vote for what video you want to see this weekend and the majority of you voted for this one right here, the binder showcase. I've also seen the comments some of you guys have left and here we are. I did actually remember to write a script, I think I have it somewhere, hang on, oh there it is. Uh, let's see. Well, that's just great. Um, we'll improvise, we'll improvise, don't worry, we'll get it done. And this binder right here does contain all of my cards that are very special to me indeed. Um, some of them are pretty expensive, some of them are pretty cheap as you're gonna see, but nonetheless every single card in this binder is very special to me for one reason or another. Let's just start it off with the front page right here, and we do have Pretty classic, obviously. We have Blastoise, Charizard, and Venusaur. Specifically Japanese cards. I was actually I was actually thinking that this first page was gonna be English, or I think I had planned for it, but this card kind of denied me from it because this one in English, the Charizard EX, is really, really expensive. Stupid freaking lizard always being super expensive. And then I've kind of built around um, these three right here. I think this is one of the first cards I bought. I hella overpaid for this card, not gonna lie. Um, I actually bought it locally, and I was just getting back into Pokemon at the time. I had no idea about any of the prices for any cards, and I really, really overpaid for this one, so I still kind of regret buying this. Um, all in all, though, it's still a pretty cool Charizard, the Dark Charizard. Um, the Dark Blastoise, and here is the Dark Venusaur. Coincidentally, this is not from the... Um, Team Rocket set, as these two are. This is actually a promo, I think if you can see that right here, it says GB. So this is actually a promo. Kind of strange why they make this a promo. Um, I think the Venusaur was replaced by the Dark Dragonite, and that's kind of why this one didn't get added to Team Rocket. Still feet kind of robbed, but there we are. Um, you don't see this card very often, which is kind of surprising, I think it's pretty cool. These three right here I actually bought as a set when they were kind of affordable. I think at the time I paid around 100 euros for all three, and I'm pretty sure just the Charizard alone right now is like about 200, 150, I don't know exactly. Feels like forever ago that these came out, but I prefer this one over the English ones. Let me just pull this one out because I actually have the English version of the 25th anniversary, you're gonna see a bit later on. So let me just put this one aside and then I'll I'll show you off the the difference between them. Trust me, the Japanese versions are worth it. All right, let's move it over to the next page right here, my so-called EX page. Uh, I do have to move around the binder because if I don't, the lights are just gonna glare my key lights. So I'll guess I'll do it like this, try to not make it glare as much. So here we are, EX cards, of course, you know how much I love them. I don't have nearly enough for how much I love them, but there we are. And these three are actually a funny story. Um, these three are also among the very first cards I bought when I returned back to the hobby. It was kind of funny, um, when I bought these cards I went way over my monthly budget and I kind of had to cut back on the spending after that one. Still very happy that I did pick them up. I think I actually picked up all three of them from the same seller. I think I bought this one first and then I saw he had both of these on sale as well. And then I, I, I cancelled my order and added these two to the order themselves and I'm really happy that I did. I like I like these three cards. Um, these are Nintendo Black Star promos. So I don't think they're that expensive. I think last time I checked the Rayquaza is sitting at like 50 to 70 euros or something like that. But yeah, it is a, a mix between Japanese and English um, for this page though, or for these two pages. The next page I had planned to be only English, but that kind of got in the way as well. And these three I'm also really happy about. The, the three Reggies, those are actually pretty cool. These are actually play promos, believe it or not. I mean, if you hear play promos, Japanese play promos, you would think they'd be very, very expensive. But no, these were surprisingly affordable. I got all of these three from the same seller as well over in Japan, so I'm pretty happy that I did. Moving it over to the next page of EX cards right here, I do have all four forms of Deoxys, once again in Japanese, just because it was way more affordable than the English counterpart. The English ones can be kind of pricey, and I just love Deoxys and the EX cards. I think this one might be my favorite, the Speedform Deoxys. Um, the one thing I don't like about these ones in particular, um, even though it is very, very shiny, it does have that reverse, reverse foil effect. I don't know if you can see that, that I don't know if it's hollow bleed or something. Um, 
I think this is this is a special holo foil because this one came from a starter deck um, by the icon down right here, as you can see. Same with this one. This one also came from a starter deck, but this one I haven't checked in ages. This one doesn't seem to have that weird effect. But there we are. That's that starter deck was released ages ago at this point, man. It's like eons. Oh, this one right here. These three cards down right here. I'm also really happy about these two. Um, this one when I bought it was very affordable. I think I got this for 20 euros. And then this one. This one was surprisingly cheap when I bought it. I bought it off eBay from a seller in Italy. And I think I paid 35 euros for this one. I think the card was like 20 euros and shipping was 15 and that is really really cheap because if I checked on card market the card was sitting at easily 50 to 70. Don't know how much it is now. I think it's it might have gone down but there we are Latias and Latios. I do like this old school border right here. Um, looks a little bit better than the the normal standard border but there we are and the Jirachi GX um, also a play promo but not as expensive as some of the other play promos in this binder right here. So these two pages are still very empty because I still have plans for this binder right here. Um, I do have this Umbreon right here that I picked up on Card Hobby. Um, I'll link the mail day somewhere I guess, maybe up here. And I got this for a really really good price. And this is also first edition. It's really hard to see with the black background and my camera not being very good on the focus. But there you go. First edition. Very, very special. Really happy that I own this. And these two pages, of course, are going to be filled with other EX cards. I do actually have some of them in the letters that I have lying around here. But I'm still waiting for a few more so that I can do a mail day video. But there we are. The EX card. So this is going to be an EX page as well. Moving it over to the next page. I actually do have some um, notes right here that I know which cars I do want to put in these pages. Uh, the gold stars, notably only the ones from um, Gen 3. That does include Rayquaza, like Rayquaza is gonna be the crown piece in this one. That still weighs away. I have no idea when I'm ever gonna buy my first gold star. I mean, actually no, that's not true. I do own the Mew gold star, the Japanese one, but then that's about it. Um, if you don't count the reprints of the Umbreon and like the special print of the Greninja and so on. I really only own the Mew gold star. I say only, really proud of that one. Even though it's just a CGC 6.5, but I'm really happy that I own this one. Yeah, so this is going to be the gold stars, like Latias, Latios, Rayquaza, and then down here I think it's going to be the Regis, and then up here is going to be um, Groudon, Kyogre, and... No, I think it... Um, maybe here was Groudon and Kyogre, and then Latias, Latios, Metagross, I think? Because, you know, Gen 3 Pokemon, I like him, and Metagross does look kind of cool. And then over here, this page is going to be filled with Call of Legends cards. I don't know which one of these I'm going to buy first. Um, first of all, I do want to complete my EX collection before I move on to other cards. Um, other than Prime cards, we're going to get to those a little bit later. Or maybe next, um, we'll see. So yeah, Call of Legends cards. Um, here, okay, there we go, there are the Prime cards. Right now, the only Prime card is the Mew right here, but it does look very, very cool. Look at that Mew. Look at it. It's so cool, I really, really like this Mew. And this is gonna be filled with Prime cards, which is why this page is also empty. And once again, also a few Prime cards in some of these envelopes that I have lying around here. And that concludes our first, like, chapter of our binder, I suppose. And then, right off the bat, we're moving it on to the Sword and Shield alternate arts. Um, this one, in particular, is actually very special to me. This Dialga right here, if I can get it out. There we go. This Dialga right here is actually very, very special to me. Because this is the first alternate art I ever pulled on the channel. Yes, it is still the exact same one that I pulled. I might have replaced some of the alternate arts I've pulled, but this one is a no-go. I'm never gonna replace this one. Even though it is off-centered, I don't even care. This is just that special to me. Same with this Lugia. This is still the exact same Lugia that I pulled from those random 10 packs that I got off my local card store two years ago. Man, pulling that one from 10 random packs, that's still one of my favorite pulls of all time. And then the Giratina. Most of these were actually featured in a mail day previously. The Moltres as well, although this is 
is not the same Moltres from from a while ago, because as you can see, this one is a little bit better centered. Same with the Zapdos. The Zapdos is actually one of those cards that I pulled myself that I actually ended up replacing because it was off centered and it kind of drove me mad a little bit. Not gonna lie. So those are two cards that I actually replaced with better versions. Um, so to speak, even though centering doesn't matter. I think on the Moltres, though, in the Moltres specifically, centering does really matter, in my opinion. Because the Moltres is such a symmetrical card that if it's off-centered, it's gonna drive you insane, trust me. It's gonna drive you mad. Next page right here are the Evolutions. I mean, there's not really much to say about these. These are still pretty cool, these are Evolutions, and then in the middle is this... this Silly looking EVGX. I kind of figured, or I kind of was thinking, what card should I put in the middle of these? It has to be an EV card, right? And I was actually considering the um, Munch EV promo, but then I realized, first of all, it's really expensive, obviously. Second of all, it's not holographic. It's kind of like the Van Gogh Pikachu. Um, it's not holographic, it looks just like a standard card, and I thought that, well, that was boring, or well, that looks boring, and then I went with this EVGX right here, um, pretty cool. I actually considered replacing my alternate arts with their Japanese counterparts. I mean, for some of them that might be doable, uh, the Giratinas would be pretty expensive, but for some of them might be doable, even for the Moonbryon right here, but there is just no way you can buy these three, because in Japanese, believe it or not, in Japanese, this isn't even the most expensive EV card, or the most expensive Evolution card from the Sword and Shield era. No, those three right here, in Japanese, are like $4,000 each. And I was just like, yeah, okay, that's never gonna happen. That's never gonna happen. I should just grab the Chinese versions, honestly. That's something I've thought about as well. Because the Chinese versions for all three is like 80 to... or 60 to 80 dollars. Um, really good price. Out of all of these Evolution cards, I mean, this is obviously really special to me. Because I pulled this myself from the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. Two left. So, I'll try my best to not spoil it this time around. So let's just do this right here. Okay. We pull the code card out. Evolving Skies code card. There you go. And then we do one, two, three to the front, actually. We lift this one up, which is our steel energy or metal energy. And then we we see what we can get in this one. We've got a Swaylus. Got a Skip Loom. Very happy Skip Loom. Maybe that's me after the opening. I mean, it probably already is. It probably already is. You have Tentacool. We've got another Pikachu, very nice. We've got a C Dot. We've got a Boost Shake. And we got the Umbreon V! Holy moly, are you kidding me? Are you fing kidding me? Oh my god! To this date, still the best card I ever pulled on the channel. Nothing has ever come close. And I don't think, I mean, if I don't open up like crazy sets, nothing is ever going to come close to the feeling of pulling this card myself. Man, that was such a cool feeling, believe it or not. Um, I do have to say though, my my favorite Evolution card is the Sylveon still. Love the Sylveon. Love all the Pokemon in the background and foreground as well, I suppose. It just looks so nice. Really, really like this one. That's my favorite one. That's my favorite one. All right. Here are the last few alternate arts. I do have... Uh, it's not all alternate arts. It's just the ones that I really, really like. And some of them are actually pretty affordable, like the, the Lilligand right here. But let's focus on this page right here first. Um, first up, we have the Zera Aura V. Stunning illustration. Stunning artwork, so that was a given that I have that card as well. The Iridactyl, that's also a given because it has Pokemon in the background, and I love those kinds of illustrations. I love those kinds of illustrations. And then the Shower's Art, I mean Red Lizard, what else are you gonna say? The Rayquaza, that's also a given. The Gengar, very popular alternate art. And then the Shadow Rider Kelly Rex, which might actually be a little bit weird in this selection right here. But if I can show this card up close, the card looks super beautiful. 
Like the illustration is so well done and the illustration is by Mitsuhiro Arita. And he knocked it out of the park. I really, really liked, really, really liked this illustration. Then I also have the two, the two sleepy boys down right here, Tyranitar and Dragonite, and I threw in the Neuvern, because once again, Mitsuhiro Arita illustration, and in my opinion, pretty underrated. It's like, it's like basically it's Batman. That's what it is. That is what it is. Looks so cool. Next page right here, the Mewtwo V. I mean, this is probably the only, the only alternate art you really want from Pokemon Go. I don't think the Conkeldur is necessarily that good. And then some cards, as I said, are pretty cheap. The Sneezer, I think, is pretty affordable still. The Lilligant, I've said. Um, the Lumineon, this is actually not the one that I pulled myself from, like, a random tin opening. I had this before I pulled that one from a random tin. And then the Golurk as well. The Golurk is also really affordable, but once again, it does feature Pokémon in the background. And it's super cute illustration, like from Oswaldo Kato. All right, next page right here, and we're moving it on to the special sets, Japanese special sets. So all of these cards are from VMAX Climb. Actually, not all of these cards are from VMAX Climb. It's these two aren't, the Pikachu and the Brakeson. And the um, the Garchomp also isn't, but most of these are from VMAX Climax. And this is kind of what I like to do whenever these special sets get released. Just grab 18 cards that I really like from the set and just stick them in the binder. Obviously, the two evolutions right here, Flareon, Vaporeon, Jolteon, that's a given. The Pikachu, I think I pulled this myself, same goes with the Brakes, and then, then the Charizard and the Leon, that's a given, that looks really cool. Um, the Dedenne down right here, we have the Zekrom with N, and we have Claire with the... Um, with the King draw. Really cool illustration. I don't think there has to be said anything about these. These are just really, really cool. And then over to the character Super Rares right here. I do have the Articuno, the Zapdos, and the Moltres because, well, they kind of fit and I like their illustrations, obviously. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in this binder. Um, I do have the Zacian and the Zamazenta. The Zamazenta I don't actually like that much because the Zamazenta, in my opinion, kind of falls short because the Zacian looks just so much better. Looks just so much better. And then we have the crowning piece with the with the Cynthia, which is actually something I've noticed like a few months after I bought the card, in fact, or maybe even a year. This is actually slightly off-centered in terms of texture. I don't know if I can show this. Hang on. Maybe you can see it right there. I've tried to point it out in editing. The texture is very, very slightly misaligned. And I was thinking, I was looking at the card um, a little while ago, and I was thinking it looked a little bit odd. And then I looked more closely, and yeah, it is actually off-center. Texture shift, that is very rare in Japanese cards. I do have one texture shift error card graded, which is the... Coincidentally, the Zamazenta again, and that's pretty cool. And then down here is the Blaziken with May in the background. We have Mimikyu with Acerola, and we have Crobat with Silver. All in all, pretty great stuff. Of course, after VMAX Climax comes V-Star Universe. Got the name right. And here is where it also shows. I mean, some of these illustration rares are also pretty cheap. But then I have stuff like the Mill Tank. That is super affordable, this card right here. And it looks just so nice. I love this illustration. I really, really do. Which is why it's in my special binder. I do have the Mew also right here, the Manaphy. I mean, these are gorgeous to look at. Down right here, I have the three legendary dogs, the Entei, the Raikou, and the Suicune. The Suicune, coincidentally, I think I've pulled this card like three or four times. I think once in Japanese, two times in English or something like that. Maybe three times in English. Moving on to the next page right here. I do have the three golden gods right here. I do have the Charizard. I have the Mewtwo, which I also pulled in one of my openings. This is still the exact same Mewtwo, never sold it or anything. And then down here, the Darkrai also. The very first special artware that I pulled from V-Star Universe still in here. Still sitting in here, and I think the Zoro Arc might have also been the one I pulled in a versus battle, although I'm not quite sure. I might have bought this one. Um, the Giratina, though, the Giratina is actually really special. So, when V Star Universe was first released, I didn't actually want to buy these gold cards. I mean, I pulled this myself, and I didn't actually want to buy all of the other gold cards. Um, so, I ended up selling this one. Package got lost, nothing happened for like two weeks. And the seller was messaging me and so on and so forth, so I messaged um, Deutsche Post and they couldn't find the package. 
and like one week or like two or three days after I messaged them, the package started moving again, and then upon checking the tracking information after it had moved again, I immediately recalled the package back to me, so that it wouldn't be- whoops. So that it wouldn't be delivered. So two more days later, it arrived back at my place, I refunded the seller, and I've kept the card. And then I kind of built around the Giratina. Luckily though, I pulled the Giratina, I'm pretty sure this is still the most expensive card out of the four, but all three are really, really well done. They let Akira Egawa cook with those four. Can't wait to see what she does with the upcoming high class set. Man, oh man. I kind of took that as a sign that I should have kept this card, and I did. I'm really glad I did now. All right, here is the space for my special illustration rails. Most of these are very recent because I have opened these one in a recent mail day. I say recent, but it's probably over a month ago at this point. Um, all of these are really, really cool. The Altaria specifically, I love that illustration, that looks so nice. And then obviously we do have the three cards. I did have the Charizard in English, but as you know, I did exchange all of my special illustration rares for their Japanese counterpart. And I do really like that I made that decision because these are so much better than their English counterpart. I have a video comparing the texture. I'll link it up here somewhere as well. Um, go check that one out. So, really, really cool stuff. So, the next page is empty because I don't know how many special illustration rares I'm going to collect during the Scarlet and Violet era. Um, I do have a bunch of space right here. We'll see how much I end up with if we do get Evolution special illustration rares. They're, first of all, they're going to be pretty expensive and there's going to be a lot of them. So, I will probably need a lot of space. And then there's also the Team Rocket setup coming for next year. Um, this might not be enough space for all these special illustration rares, or special art rares, sorry, special art rares as they're called in Japanese. Alright, and here we are at my favorite page in this whole binder, my Mew page. I think some of you have probably waited for this page, and even though Mew is my favorite Pokemon, I don't have as many cards as you think I would, probably. Um, I only have one and a half pages in this main binder, believe it or not. I do have a bunch of cards graded as well. If I say Mew is my favorite Pokemon, you probably expected like the full binder of Mew cards. I mean, there are only so many Mew cards I can add to this binder. There aren't enough to make like a standalone binder for just a Mew, and most of these are actually really cool, not just because they feature Mew, but also in general they're really cool. So let's start it off with the top right here, the Bubble Mew. This one I not notably pulled um, in a Discord call with a couple of friends. Was really surprised when I did, and really happy of course. The Bubble Mew. Really, really nice card, really lovely. Then I do have the gold card, the golden Mew right next to it. I do love these golden cards, which is why I also have this one down here. And I don't have the English one. The English one I do have graded in a PSA 10, um, twice or three times, something like that. But there we are. Um, this Mew EX, just a promo, I say just a promo, pretty cool. Um, the normal standard Mew V, the V Max, and the V Alternate Art. All three are really cool. The VMAX I bought a lot later than I did the other two. And I'm really happy I did. It does look kind of lackluster if you look at it like this, but believe me, if you look at the card up close and like without sleeves, the card does look really, really beautiful. It's just a shame that the sleeves kind of reduce the amount of sparkliness, if that makes sense, of this card. And that right down here, this one, this Golden Mew, the 25th anniversary Golden Mew, so this one is also incredibly special to me, because three years ago, when these were first printed in their 25th anniversary set, I got one of those special boxes for Christmas. Um, I think those boxes contained like four normal booster packs, and then one of those special packs where you could pull the Charizard out of, or any of the other classic cards, so-called. And in the very last pack of that booster box, I pulled this one. Almost exactly, actually no, it was exactly on Christmas Eve. I opened it like right after I got it. I mean, after everything had winded down and you know, the party was over, so on and so forth. I opened the pack and I pulled this in the very last booster pack. And that is so special to me. I'm probably never gonna give this one away. Never, never in a million years. That is so cool. And that kind of special connection that you can form with a card, right? Maybe that sounds a little bit corny, but there you go, that's the Mew. 
right next to it the Mew EX. Um, I also bought this one off Card Hobby in a recent mail day. Once again, I say recent, it's probably a little while ago by now. And then the Golden Mew VMAX from VMAX Climax. Really cool idea of these cards. I think I like these a little bit more than the, the um, blue gold ones they did recently. And then moving over to this page. This page is also incredibly special. It does feature cards like the Lily Pad Mew. Um, this one that I finally added to my collection after a long time. This should have been in my collection ages ago. I do have the Shining Mew. The very first Shining Mew from the Koro Koro comic. I do have the original Mew EX from... What's the Japanese set called? Mirage Forest or Miracle Forest? One of those two, I'm pretty sure. The very first print, also in first edition. And then right next to it, the most of all special Mew cards right here. The Play Promo 007 Mew EX. And I like the change of Mew. Same with the one next to it. Usually you have the Mew cards that are always kind of cute and so on. And Mew is like not very serious as it is right up here. It's like just playful, which is what Mew is. But I do like once in a while some badass illustrations just to show how powerful Mew actually is. Because I'm pretty sure in terms of lore, Mew is actually stronger than Mewtwo. I don't know if that's true. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure Mew is stronger than Mewtwo. But there we are, also down here. This was actually my first, I think my second um, profile picture on YouTube. Um, from this promo right here, from this black and white promo. Really, really happy looking Mew. And this Mew, actually let me show this one off right down here. Um, the Mew from Expedition, it is in German, and this was also one of the very first cards I bought when I returned back to the hobby. The Mew from Expedition, it looks so cute, that illustration. And the hollow foil and so on. Good thing it's in a sleeve, because the back up right here has a lot of whitening, so it wouldn't grate very highly, but you know, for a binder copy, you know, you wouldn't have noticed if I didn't tell you, right? And that's the beauty of binders and binder copies. If I turn it around, nothing you can see. The back could be completely gone for all you know. And as long as the front is great, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter, there you go. And this is a Mew that I've talked about for hours. For hours, this, well, this would be the most rare Mew card. If this wasn't a proxy, this is a proxy, this is not real. If this was real, then it probably wouldn't be in this binder, because this card is super rare and super expensive. Once again, if it were real. Just a proxy, but I just had to add it to the binder, because of how special it is. Right, next here, I do have a few more Mew cards right here. I do have this one. This is the first Mew card ever released. The very first one, although I do think this is the the reprint. I think this was printed twice, and this is from that special CD collection where you got that promo from. I think the first one was like from a competition or something. Um, I might be misremembering things, but I'm pretty sure this is the reprint from the CD collection. I do also have the Southern Islands Mew. This is the Japanese version though, a little bit cheaper than the English one, and in my opinion looks even better than the, than the English version. Um, this one right here, this is the so-called Tree of the Beginning Mew. It's like from a 10th anniversary movie set, where you got not only this card, I think you got Latias and Latios as well. You got, um, I think, Explosive Birth Lugia is, is what the promo card is called. It's like 10 cards or 8, something like that, of Pokemon that were notably featured in movies. So Mew is for the first movie, of course, and then you have Latias and Latios. I'm pretty sure Deoxys is also among those. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool set, though. Um, I do have the Ancient Mew. I mean, that's a given. The Ancient Mew is so iconic. And I do have this one. I have this one right here. Um, the Nintendo Black Star. So actually, funny story. I did have this card in a non-holographic version for probably over 20-25 years, right about there, don't know exactly. Basically, when this promo in a non-holographic was first released, um, I got it. I actually never sold it. Like, out of all the cards that I ever sold that I did have, like the Umbreon EX, I did have that one in German, um, that card I never sold. 
Um, I think I still have it lying around somewhere, but then I decided to upgrade when I was rebuilding my collection and bought the holographic version of this one. It's also super iconic, that mule right here. And then this one, surprisingly, this should be really, really rare, this Mew, because there are so little listings of that card, but it is unfortunately just a non-holographic version. But still, really cool card, and I do have this one from Secret Wonders, and that does conclude the Mew collection, at least. All right, moving it on to the Rayquaza right here. Um, even if Rayquaza is probably my second most favorite Pokemon, you know, it's second only to the Mew, of course, it's only one page that I have of Rayquaza cards. And still, all of these are pretty cool, especially this alternate art right here. I think I've talked about it a couple of times, but Evolving Skies, surprisingly, was actually the very first set I opened when I returned back to the hobby. I opened one English booster box and I opened a German booster box. I pulled this one in the English booster box right here. And I think I pulled the Glaceon VMAX in the German one. And that is so special. I was really, really chasing the card when it first came out. Really wanted this one and I got it in my first booster box. What do you know? Looking back at it, it's also pretty surprising. As you can see, it's off-centered. But just for how special it is and I pulled it myself, I don't care. This is also staying in my collection forever. I do have the Chinese version of this one that I do want to send in for grading. So we'll see when I do that. They're still lying around here somewhere, just waiting to be graded. I do, I am waiting for a few more cards, but there we are. I think another card to point out is this one right here. I um, bought this one off Card Market and the seller I bought it from had like no experience whatsoever in selling cards. Like brand new account and also kind of... I want to say horrible communication, but then also not, if that makes sense. I mean, I ordered the card, he didn't ship it for 10 days, I cancelled the order, and then he, he messaged me, if you still want the card, I can ship it to you, and then I bought it again, and he actually did ship it that time, although, no protection, nothing, the card just came, I don't even know if it came in a sleeve, but no top loader, nothing, just stuck the card in an envelope and shipped it over to Germany. The seller was from Portugal and it arrived and there was no damage, nothing. The card was perfect, which was really surprising given that it had no protection whatsoever. So there you go. The Rayquaza C level X, I do like the level X cards, probably because they are like the EX cards, just like the next evolution from them. And then we do have the Mega Evolution cards, the Mega Evolution Rayquaza. I think I pulled this one from the um, the booster box that I opened on Christmas, you know, that special set where I also pulled the Golden Mew from. I think I pulled this one in that classic collection booster pack that you get. Um, this might be the same card, although don't quote me on that one. I do also have the Golden Rayquaza right here. And you've already seen this one, the Rayquaza VMAX with Cynia. Right down here is a really cool looking black and white promo, no, X and Y promo. And then the Rayquaza GX right there, also really happy. And this one, the Rayquaza EX. And this card just basically started it all. Before returning back to collecting Pokemon, I did actually collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You know, kind of filled up my binder with those cards because that was kind of the game, the card game that I did play as a kid. So I had a little bit more of a connection to Yu-Gi-Oh in terms of the TCG at least than I did to Pokemon. And I bought this card and I don't want to say it was all downhill from there, so I'm going to say it was all uphill from there because I'm really glad that I did go and get back into the hobby. There you go, that's my Rayquaza page. Right up next is my Charizard page. I mean, maybe you've seen this one coming. I do call him Red Lizard at times. Actually, all of the time probably. But it's Charizard and Charizard is super iconic. And most of these cards aren't very special. Um, this one is kind of nice. This one was the CGC 9 that I got back in a return a while ago. Decided to crack it out of the case and just slap it in my binder. Um, this is a the Charizard from Celebrations, and I'm just going to pull this out to do the comparison. Um, this Charizard VMAX I pulled when I opened every single Sword and Shield booster pack. Um, from a single Darkness Ablaze pack that has been sitting in my shelf, or on my shelf, for like three months at that point, and that card was inside, and then these three from the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, which I've opened numerous times, and honestly, I probably will open again at some point, because the product is just so cool. So, here we are, 
the English versus the Japanese version. Right off the bat you can see the Japanese version actually does feature like a golden border, whereas the English version kind of tries to keep it original with the yellow border. Um, I think it, it could go either way. It could go either way which one you prefer. I myself prefer the, the Japanese version, but that's just because I don't really have any special connection to the English Charizard. I didn't collect at the time where Base Set came out, or even when the whole Pokemon craze started around 1999, like 2000s. I only started collecting around the Gen 3 era, so that's why that might be why I don't really see that card as that special. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's in this binder and I, I really like the card, but I do prefer the Japanese version. And here is the Pikachu, the Pikachu page. I mean, if you talk about Iconic, you do have to have a Pikachu page. I do have a Surfing Pikachu, this is a Pokemon Center promo. I do have a Flying Pikachu because I did want to kind of do switch things up, so this is a Flying Pikachu. And this is the Pikachu that I've also, this is also among the very first cards that I bought when I returned back to the hobby. Um, birthday Pikachu, of course, I featured this card numerous times in, in my cheap card videos. So it's in my binder, of course. Do have the special one from Crown Zenith, because obviously that is way more affordable than the Japanese version. And then I actually have this one right there. This is the so-called Mystery Dungeon DX Pikachu, or something like that. Um, this was a promo in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX. And it's actually pretty cool. Obviously, it fe features Pikachu and um, Bulbasaur right down there, also with a Pelipper. If you ever played Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team Blue or Red, you're gonna recognize that house in the background immediately. Because in that game, and then I suppose the remake, the DX one, um, the house you have, or your base, is actually modeled after the Pokemon that you have. So if you have a Pikachu, the house looks like a Pikachu and so on and so forth. Really cool addition. And then down here I do have the Pikachu V with the purple background. I think I pulled this in one of my... might have been random openings or something like that. Probably one of the better cards I pulled from Vivid Voltage. Of course, this is the, the Pikachu that you do want to pull from Vivid Voltage, although this one is Chinese. Picked this up for really, really cheap and just stuck it in my binder. Looks really cool. And I do have the Japanese um, po Pikachu V from VMAX Climax. Over to the next page. Jesus, I'm a, if I'm looking at the recording, this video is gonna be pretty long, so I do hope you enjoy. Um, I do have a Gardevoir page and I have a Flygon page. Let's start with the Gardevoir page. Um, right down here, or right up there, is the Gardevoir EX from Shiny Treasure EX. Man, that illustration looks super, super cool. I really like that illustration. I do have this one from Steam Siege, the secret rare from Steam Siege God of War EX. Yeah, that's just, in my opinion, one of the best God of War illustrations out there. Maybe even better than this one, that's how cool it is. It is illustrated by Mitsuhiro Arita. So there you go, you can kind of see, you can kind of see God of War's eye glowing right there, it looks kind of spooky, scary. Um, I do have the God of War EX from Scarlet and Violet base set, the Mega God of War EX, and I also do have like some odd ones out here. This one is from Diamond and Pearl something, I don't know the exact set. So this one right down here, this is actually an illustration promo, similar to the um, Charizard and then the most recently released Pikachu one. And that looks so stunning. I think still to this day, this might be my most favorite illustration contest winner ever. It just looks so cool. Don't you agree? And if you look at the artist right down there, um, right now you might recognize the name Yu Nishida. Yu Nishida actually started off with this illustration contest, and after they won the contest, they would go on and illustrate more cards for the Pokemon Company. That is kind of cool. This is that's basically the very first card that Yu Nishida ever illustrated, and it was for an illustration contest. And then this one is just from Ruby and Sapphire Base Set. The very first, the very first God of War card to ever be released, I'm pretty sure. And then over here is the Flygon. Of course, if I'm talking Gen 3 Pokemon, I do have to include my boy Flygon. Although, as you can see from the desolate state of my binder page, 
there aren't that many good Flygon cards out there. There isn't actually a really good Flygon V. I mean, this is probably the closest thing to a good Flygon V card. Although now looking at it, I should probably exchange this for the Japanese version at the very least. Um, this one I really like actually, the Japanese Hyperware. Hyper Rare from the Sun and Moon era. Looks really, really cool. And then I do also have these ones. And this one actually... This one right up here, I think in English, this is in EX Dragon, whereas in Japanese, this is actually a 7-Eleven promo, if you can make out that sign down at the bottom left right there. This is a 7-Eleven promo, which I thought is really funny. All right, moving on, I do have a bit more empty space right here. I've actually forgotten what kind of cards I want to put in here. Oh, and actually, no, that's right. This page... This page is gonna be filled with a very special card, but I don't want to reveal it just yet. But it's gonna be 18 copies of the exact same card. And it's gonna be featured in my next mail day, so look forward to that. And right back here is where my Full Art Trainer collection starts. As you can see right here, still a few empty pages. So for this one in particular, I had planned these ones are gonna be the X and Y era trainers, just the ones that I really like. This one obviously is already full. I'm really glad it is. This card has gotten crazy expensive. So have these two, the Rosa and the Misty. And this is Sun and Moon era trainers. I do have the Looker. The Mars, I'm really happy that I do have. Once again, I bought this actually off eBay from a seller on or from a seller um, in Italy, and I got it for a really, really good price. Same with this Acerola. This one I didn't buy off um, off eBay. I just got it off Card Market, and I got it for a really, really good price. And then the Cynthia. Th this is probably one of my favorite full art trainers. Actually, let me let me show off the the Cynthia. Just look at how cool she looks with the with the um, guard jump in the background. You also have Lucario down there in the corner. And she's just looking that so smug and so cool, ready to crush your dreams of becoming the champion with her guard jump. That's what that image is. That is what that illustration is. Right over next right here, I do have my Sword and Shield era full art trainers. I kind of wanted to order these between generations, if that makes sense. So here we have generation three. I do have Wallace, Flannery and Cinnia. Um, right down here, I th this was supposed to be like Gen 4, um, but Giovanni is kind of out of space, uh, but I don't know where else I should put him, so I do have Cheryl, I have Gordenia, and then of course Giovanni, or Boss's Orders. Down here, down here is supposed to be Gen 5, and then also Cynthia kind of snuck into, into the mix right here. I do have the Serena, which I'm really happy about that I picked this up a little while ago. I do have the Elisa Sparkle, and then of course Cynthia. Right over here, I have the Nessa, the Bea, and the Marni. This one notably used to be a PSA 9, but I cracked it out of the case and just slapped it in my binder. So there we are. I do have the Sonya from... Is this Rebel Clash? I think this is from Rebel Clash. I do recognize the, the sign down here. I do have the Melanie, and I have Raihan. And right down there, I do have cards that fit very well together. I have the Adaman, Franz and Hizui in the middle, and then Irida off to the side. That's just basically planned out how it's supposed to go. And then over right here, this is where my um, special illustration rare trainers are going to be. As you can see, I only have three right now with the Miriam. I do have the Miriam right here. I have the Lana, uh, notably in German because I pulled this from like random booster packs. And I have the Morty, pulled this one from the booster box that I opened. And that's about it. There's nothing else left, so once again, this is going to be filled with special illustration rare trainers when I get to buying them at some point. But that's probably still ways away, because right now I do want to work on my EX collection, and at last, after three and a half years, complete that one. Well, but there we go. If I'm looking at the recording, 53 minutes, I can probably cut some of the stuff out. But this is going to be a very long video. Um, if you made it to the end, then thank you so much for watching the whole video, hearing me ramble on around my Pokemon cards. Probably a little bit too much, but as I said, all of the cards in this binder are very, very special to me, and every single one of them deserves a special spot in this video. Well, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then a like would be greatly appreciated. If you didn't, then give it a dislike. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like, so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button. Click this one first, then click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, peace. Take care.